The following tutorial is brought to you by wholeloops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. How to master a song using only plugins that come with Ableton. So here it is. I'm going to play the example and we're just going to get right to it. Simple beat that I produced for the demonstration. And there's a vocal here in the middle. Uh, I'm just gonna loop this main part. It just kind of switches back and forth between the vocal part and the non-vocal part. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is create some sends. Uh, because before we hit the master channel, I'm going to uh, want to run it through two return tracks. And you just right click and create two return tracks. On this first one, we're going to put a glue compressor. This is going to be our parallel compression. And we're going to get this slamming, which means slow attack, fast release, ratio all the way up, threshold all the way down. And we are going to send our, let's send synths, vocals, and effects to compression. Um, maybe like minus, minus eight or so. We're going to send these pretty loud. And we should be slamming this now. Let's give it some makeup gain. I like that. And honestly, we're actually going to compress this even more. Um, so we're just going to duplicate this and we're going to put another one of these at about halfway. So we're really crushing this. Um, I find these Ableton plugins, you got to kind of do some crazy shit like this to get them to really uh, compress hard enough. But this is our compression bus. We're also going to be mixing in a little bit of drums, maybe at half the volume. We did minus eight, so we'll do minus 16 on the drums. And maybe I have my kick and sub separated from the rest of the drums up here. Um, oh, I should have explained that in the beginning. Everything is separated into mix groups. I have them all labeled here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing that may be confusing is I, I put my sub and kick together. I don't uh, include my kick in here because I want these to be processed differently. Um, so we're going to send the drums there, maybe the kick drum only. We're not going to be compressing the sub. We don't want that to be uh, screwing with our compressor at all. So we're just going to... So when we listen to our glue compressor, mostly vocals, synths. Let me skip to the part with the vocal. Mostly vocals and synths, not so much drums. Now our next return channel. We're going to do a little bit of saturation. This is going to be the channel for the drums. Uh, I'm going to use Ableton's Saturator, and we're not going too crazy with this. We're just going to bump this up a little bit and kind of bump this back down to compensate. Just start sending our drums to it. Back down to my 10 or so. Uh, I like that. Do you produce music and love making hot club bangers? Do you find yourself constantly searching for those crispy snares and percussions? Do you want your beats to make people turn up? Maybe it's time you stepped up your sample pack library. Here at Whole Loops, we've got the product for you. Introducing Raw Hits, our debut sample pack of organically grown drum one shots, loops, FX, vocal samples, and all the production essentials you'll need to add some organic flavor to your secret sauce. Raw Hits is available now only at wholeloops.com. So now we've done already uh, quite a bit to our uh, sound. I'm gonna actually mute these so you could hear what we've done here. We're boosting a lot of volume on these. I'm actually gonna turn these down just so that we can hear the dry signal uh, a little bit uh, closer to the same volume of the compressed and saturated signal. And that's kind of what I like to do in, as far as balancing my sounds before I actually get to the master chain. Because on the master chain, I don't like to do very much. Um, I always start out with my roll off, the steepest one you have available. Because as you bump this up, instead of listening to the sub going away, start listening to the top coming back. And then kind of find a spot to reintroduce the sub. And then if you feel like you're still missing the bass, bump it up a little bit. I don't like to do too much boosting with this EQ. Uh, in fact, I'm actually, in this song, I'm going to dip some of this, these. I always prefer to, because this EQ doesn't sound so great, just do cutting with this one. 
Um, because if this is really the only EQ that you're limited to, boosting frequencies with this, I find just sounds so harsh that I would really only use an EQ like this to cut. Like if you want more highs, simply cut the other three and boost the output volume and you'll be left with more highs without having to actually boost this thing. Um, next one, we're actually gonna use another EQ8 and we're just going to uh, sweep our frequencies by turning on our headphone knob and we're gonna find something that doesn't sound good because you almost always do. Let's make our loop over here. When you grab it, it switches to the solo. Yeah. Gets real ugly right in there. And all you gotta do is just dip it up. And then as you reduce this, you can hear a little bit of clarity coming back in in the top. And then at the end, we're just gonna limit it. And we're just gonna uh, hit this limiter a little bit. And also keep in mind, I gain staged all these groups at minus 15 in these uh, kind of like the parallel compression bus and the saturation bus at minus five. That way I still have room to push it up with the limiter by the time I get here. Because if you're already at zero and everything's getting smashed, stuff's coming, too, coming in too hot from up here. And uh, as a little bit of coloration at the end, I'm actually going to be using this EQ3 just on the very top. Pull that out. See this EQ is kind of making it a lot less boxy. With limiters, you really can go until they sound bad. But yeah, that's really how I would have finished this song. You shouldn't need to do too much processing on your master. Uh, you may find another frequency to dip out. That's something that stands out that sounds bad. But generally, you don't want to be doing too much work on the master chain because if you have to go crazy with plugins here, it's probably because you screwed up something up here. Um, I don't even ever bother bouncing them out as stems or doing it as audio files or making a new session. Uh, even if I'm not using Ableton plugins, my MacBook Pro can handle the the uh, the plugins running all at once. So I've been doing this for a while and it's been serving me well. Uh, so to all of you who have asked how I would do it with Ableton plugins, this is your answer. And if there's anything else you would like answered, feel free to leave it in the comments as a question. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you with another tutorial next week. Peace out.